Here is our Terran player. We're gonna find out soon what kind of architecture he will build on this map. Stati Bomo. Red Terran. Startail Bomber. Very, very strong player. Nice guy. He is. Former member of Eastro and Brood War. He went by NSP Fancy. But this guy is. I am Nesty. Nesty, fight that! Not Bomber, he's, he's like Nesty. In, he actually introduces himself as like, I am Nesty. There he is. Headset matching his clothes. And there is the really cool Nesty cheerful that we saw him being made earlier. The can of soda with a hat on. A couple people uh, here. One guy's here from Maryland. Here hanging up with his friend who's from Seoul. Um, Bomber sending out a very early SCV to the bottom of his ramp to produce a barracks. And I wonder if we're going to see a second barracks next to that. Uh, was that, I think that might wall his ramp if he puts another barracks there. Yeah, this is and actually the reason why they changed a lot of the maps to put a little supply depot at the bottom of the ramp was so that you couldn't do things like yeah. this. But if he decides to, he can wall off again with another barracks. Or actually, you could just make a supply depot. I think you, that would wall you, as well. You, you do very often see two racks pressure on this map, although it looks like he's not going to because we don't see the second barracks yet. Um, hatch first for Nesty. Droning up pretty hard. Yeah, Nesty. He's a guy known for making a lot of drones. Nesty's like a millionaire. He's like, I bet he's got golden rings on his fingers. He just, he just doesn't wear them to the cast when he leaves. He puts all his golden rings on. He's got all this, like, diamonds and stuff. I mean, he's won two championships. He's got a ton of money. Yeah. Alright, so gas for bomber actually a really late timing, getting it at about 16 rather than the normal like 15, 13, 14 ish timing for gas. So a little bit funky. It's almost as if he's not entirely sure what kind of build he wants to do. When you see something like that, it's kind of weird. Well, that's true. He might be thinking about uh, scouting first and seeing what Nesty's okay, doing so and now responding I, to it. Now I kind of get it. I think he was thinking about doing a gas expand. In fact, he only put one SCV in that gas, so he, he wants to get that command center up, and I think he just wants to have just enough gas to make a tech lab on his barracks. Mm. I think that's what he's got planned. And in fact, he's about to have enough. So two more trips on that gas. <laughs> Am I right? Not making a tech lab. Bomber's play style here, a little bit confusing to me. Now he's going to make a second barracks, I think, to wall this off. He may yet make the tech lab. We'll see. Um, it's just, I've never really seen a build like this where you get a late gas and only put one SCV on it and then don't make a tech lab and make a know. command center. It's Maybe a little bit funky, save up man. for a reactor. Maybe he does. Um, Actually, he's about to make a factory. another barracks, though. This is, yeah, that's a, a little weird. There you go, he's just saving up for a factory. Yeah, it may have been actually a mistake that he put only one in gas. Well, oh, now he put four in gas. I think what? Bomber... I think... Uh, I, I'm going to call it now. I think Bomber may be choking a little bit here. He, he put the one SCV in the gas. He got the gas late. Then he put four SCVs in the gas. Well, I don't think it was a, a, a big mistake. The first... I think the four is obviously a mistake. But um, he did end up with, like, just the perfect amount of minerals and gas to make that factory after his two barracks and his command center. So it may have been planned. Uh, Maybe. We, just, we just don't know at this point. But, um, yeah, this is definitely strange, though. Now, Bomber uh, was the first that I saw, at least, to really go for the multiple orbitals off one base play against Zerg. You know, he even got three orbitals before expanding once in a game on Zelnaga that I saw. Um, so, I, I think this he might just be going for something like that and trying to get a lot of economy and a lot of stuff out before taking his natural yeah. and then try and move out. Well, he is making a second factory now back at home. He's making a Hellion out of his first one. Interesting. Started to get a lot of Marines out. Didn't fully wall off, but he had his Marines in such a way that it'd be very difficult for his Zerglings to get in there cost-effectively. Huh. Well, both of those barracks are rather factories naked at this point. Neither of them going to make a add-on. They need a cover-up, man. And actually, he's just making two factories, Hellions, rather than making a reactor. And I think the reason why is he plans on actually using those factories or something else later. Just wants to make Hellions out at this time. And it, by all means, like, this build is probably a good build. It's pretty normal. But I've never seen it before. Yeah, no, it definitely seems like something Bomber has specifically planned for this yeah. match and this map. You know, I said earlier, maybe he's uh, choking, but now he's, he's starting to show some really technical stuff. He still has four guys on his gas. That's yeah. unfortunate, but yeah. those things happen to everybody. Yeah, he <laughs> is moving up for an attack here. Um, he may have showed those two barracks and the orbital to make him think, like, oh, I'm going mass Marines. And now with these Hellions, uh, Nesty may not expect this, these Hellions. He does have a couple of spine crawlers going up with the main. He's got 24 speedlings morphing right now, yeah. as well as a Baneling Nest. I don't think the Baneling's will be there in time, but the speedlings are going to come out right at the last moment. 
Yeah, and here come the Hellions. The spine car is trying to finish. Might target one of those down. Oh, it pulls back uh, and all well, he needs is a couple hit on those Hellion on those wings with the Hellions though, and he'll roast them all. Doing a good job of microing back. And he's gonna take out every single Zergling. Two spine crawlers are up at the front though, though. Yeah, now so those we are can't up. quite press that, but that seems like boom, nine drones, and I'm taking the bottom right expansion. Wow. That's what Nesty's like, man. That is what he's like. And he, as part of that's because of those, uh, he got a couple banelings out at the front. That we see now. Um, if he didn't have those banelings, he would have to still be worried. But with a couple banelings and a few zerglings, you can defend against Hellions and Marines. So it's it's a pretty smart for him to get that extra base. Uh, but Bomber still has pretty good map control. He's going to have Blue Flame soon as well. Yeah, when that Blue Flame finishes up, he's going to continue to do some harassment. But. Nesty does have those spine cores, has some banelings out with good control. He should be able to defend it quite easily. The problem for Nesty, the, the problem area, the target area is that third base. If it gets scouted, Luflam Hellions are going to reign supreme there. So we'll see. I, I just, just to go back for a moment, I just want to say one more time how cool it was. I like the idea of having those Marines to like deal the damage and then keeping the Hellions behind them to roast the Zerglings as they come in to surround the Marines. It's pretty cool. And if, if Nesty hadn't made 24 Zerglings, if he'd made 18 Zerglings, he might have lost that push. So. Smart move and hold that thought. Elliot's trying to come in here. Oh! Single failing lands on the front of those. That was nice. If another one lands and kill all three. Lands on just one. He might be able to do some damage here, but the queens are gonna deny that. Some really nice creep spread by an ST. Oh, He's actually just making his drones into whatever he can to save them. He's probably gonna cancel those as soon as the Hellions are cleaned up. Well, maybe not. Oh, those drones coming at the wrong time. And two of them die. He's really being persistent with these Hellions. He's like, eh, you can't kill my Hellions fast enough. I'm just going to kill your drones. Yeah, and Ness, he just like, grabbed all his drones and made all of them into a different structure. <laughs> I mean, that's one way to save your drones. And Wait. two Hellions somehow get out alive. Yep. But this one's feeling. Oh. oh he man. just didn't get a shot of it. And tried to take those Hellions out by himself. Didn't work. Spire being produced now. Uh, doesn't want to have to deal with those Hellions. It's a smart move, but uh, Bomber, not persisting with like mass mech play or anything like that. He still does have a lot of bio out coming, coming out. That's true. And it looks like he may want to push that third base moving forward here, but Nesty morphing a lot of Banelings, as you can see, 14 of them in fact. Does have a spine crawler up, in fact, going to reposition some spine crawlers to make it very easy to defend this push. Well, I say very easy. Make it much easier, significantly easier. He may try to flank here to attack from the back and while well, the spine core is at the front. In fact, that's exactly what he's going to do. Get a shot of it in a second. Here come the Marines, though, up the ramp. And SC Tanks. decides not to flank. Tanks powering down that spine crawler. Tanks do tons of damage, and they're really good against the buildings. And here he comes down the ramp. And oh, the Marines caught off guard. Do go down. That one tank somehow survives long enough for the Roaches to kill it. <laughs> Uh, does he have? He has siege mode, right? Yeah. Yeah, he does. He's so just gonna was... siege up outside the creep, and just use this as a staging point to try and prod in. And if he gets siege tanks in the right position and vision, he can start taking out those spine crawlers, and he can start hitting the hatchery from the low ground. Very true. But he needs to worry about that little force picking off reinforcements. This, I, it's it's a tough spot for Bomber because he's got his forces kind of split up right now, and Nesty has roach speed. He's trying to pick units off here and there, as you can see in the middle of the map. And Bomber, he wants to do damage here, but now some of his forces are kind of trapped. It looks like he is going to try to rescue them. But here come the Roaches down the ramp, going to target down these siege tanks. Whoa, a little bit sloppy there by Nesty. Not decisive at all. Just basically right-click moved into those siege tanks that ran away. Yeah. Not good to run into siege tank fire, usually. Usually. So I, unless you're, like, dropping I, wheels on top of siege tanks. I try tanks. to avoid it. You try to avoid it? Yeah. That's good. Um... Marines anyway. trying to dart up here. So Spine crawlers at the top. Yeah, so here he is. Here is he's going to try and siege up on the low ground and use it. And that because if he has vision, that low ground actually protects his tanks. So on the ridge there, so he's able to shell that. And it looks like a little bit of a counter going for Nesty across the map. And he's going to try and come around from behind those Few tanks. Are out. He's going to try to target those down. Bomber leaving his reinforcements at home in a group so they don't just get countered little by little by that force in the middle. Smart move, but now he's going to move a large force across. 
And oh, the Marines lose track of those tanks for a minute. The Mutas come in and pick them off. Does take out two of those Oh, tanks. but he got the hatchery. I didn't even realize that. He did kill the hatchery in the midst of all that. Yeah, I was going to mention that. That's that's really important. That's the key here because even though he's going to lose his entire army, he did get that hatchery, but even so, he's lost a lot of units. Now, this middle part of the map is so hard to attack. It's what I was trying to talk about earlier. The map architecture here lends map itself architecture. lends itself to uh, the siege tanks being at the top of the ramp. It's very difficult to attack with melee units when there's so many ramps, and the siege tanks are at the top of the nice concave with Marines supporting them. Very, very difficult to break through. But when you have units like Yudas, you can run through and target down siege tanks. Bomber is sieged up here. Yeah, he's got his force split into two groups so that no units can kind of catch him off guard. Yeah, he does need to be careful, though, that he does stay sieged up. He doesn't want to... There's a large group of Banelings around, and there's more morphing. Hold that thought. Muta's coming in to do some harassment. Medivacs are like, whoa, this is not the party we were invited to. They need to, need to turn around, and I don't know if he has Marines or anything. Back yeah, here, a few, a few Marines, Marines charging him, but they're going to die. That's actually... This counterattack is really doing a lot of damage. He needed a Thor or something back at home to prevent this. Yeah, and the Mutas just cleaned up everything, like you said. Tanks coming out, they're dying instantly. So basically, what Bomber has, if the Mutas stay there, what Bomber has is what he's going to get because he's not going to be able to get any more units out because there's production facilities are camped. Here he comes forward, though. In the middle of the map, here he goes. Zerli's running them while the tanks are on siege, though. There's a ton of roaches trying to get into position as well. The Marines running like a marathon out of there. Whoa. And it looks like he does clean it up, and Nesty looks like he's in a dominant position because he still has those mutas cleaning up those SCVs. Bomber is in trouble. Yeah, Bomber is in trouble. He's trying to land a third base over here, and it's going to get caught by these mutas. Command center's like, running away, trying to get back to the defense of the Marines and turrets. And that command center in the top right, he needs that. Does get saved. But uh, yeah, man, Nesty retook his third in the bottom right, and Bomber needed to do some damage to equal what happened with that counterattack. Even and though he lost, he, he lost his army, but he didn't like kill a base or yeah. drones or anything really. And he didn't lose that many SCVs when Nesty came in, but Nesty's there again in the main, trying to prove me a liar. He's like, Nah, I'll kill his SCVs right now. Then you have to be very careful. Does control? That's how you control your mutas. The second there's a chance that you might lose some mutas, you get them out of there. Yep. That's the how Marine, you do it. The Marines say, None of that. None of that. <laughs> Come on, stop now. Now, Nesty could actually take another base at this point, but I think he just wants to continue to be aggressive, which is smart. Yeah. Supplies right now, Nesty at 146. 94 for Bomber. Bomber's still repairing that command center, not able to, to land it quite yet, because his opponent's constantly checking. But Nesty's yeah, like, oh, I'm not going to let you take a third base, never. Yeah, and he really, wants, he really needs that to be a planetary when, when he lands it too, so it doesn't do much good to land it right now. Um... Bomber is moving out a little bit here, kind of posturing, trying to take up a good position so he can defend. And it looks like Bomber's actually going to float it up to the top left, which is going to be a little bit easier for him to, to kind of defend against than try to go all the way around to the right, to that base on the right. Yeah, oh, I'd never actually... Mind. Call, make me a liar now. He's moving his command center back to the right. Nessie's he's taking that fourth base. I'd love to see him take the gold base at this point because he's got such map control, but he may actually double expand into it because nesty has been known to do that. He has been known to do that. I heard of a game once, uh, last game that he did that. <laughs> I've heard about that. <laughs> Long time ago. I don't know if he took a gold base last game because I don't think there are any gold bases okay, on Taldry well, and didn't, Malter. He didn't do that, but he did double expand. <laughs> he did double expand. Now, Bombers are actually moving a pretty large force to defend that orbital, or rather command center, before it becomes a planetary. He wants to make sure he can take care of it, nurture it into a planetary fortress. Then once it becomes a planetary, he can maybe Kick it leave out it alone. Nest. Exactly. Now here comes some more mutas, though. If he targets down those tech labs, that'll be huge. And in fact, that's exactly what he's going to do. Actually, like he's going to almost get the factory. He does get the Whoa. factory. Oh, yeah, he targeted down the factory. It's not exactly what he's doing. I mean, kind of, but not exactly. Well, if you, if you can get a factory, you go for the factory. Uh, but it usually you just want to target the tech lab because it's an easier target. Yeah, he just has so many mutas out. In fact, six more on the way. They'll put him at 29 as soon as all those mutas oh, pop. Oh, my goodness. That is going to be huge because those guys have. Um, Oh, hold that thought. Some banelings rolling around. Looking for blow. Oh, oh. oh they're gonna. Oh! Okay, that's only five SCVs actually. Is it gonna blow them up on those SCVs? Nah. No, doesn't take the bait. He wants to wait for a big bio army to move over that. Then he's gonna blow it. Um. What was I saying before? I don't know what you were saying before, but what I'm saying now 
is that it's good that Bomber was able to get that base off, but Ness T, even though he took that fourth base, I'd really love to see him take another hatchery. There's no disadvantage of doing that at this point, especially a hatchery really far away from this planetary. And actually, he wants to attack right now. Here he goes. Not sure if I agree with this attack because there are a lot of siege tanks, but he may just have enough stuff. Mutas rolling forward here, and the Marines may be enough to hold it. Yeah, those Not mutas white. Those mutas are plus two attack upgraded. They tear through Marines so quickly. I believe the Marines only have plus, plus one armor, but either way, they're just doing so much damage with that huge flock of 22 mutas. He takes things out so quickly. Mass repair on the turrets is not enough. Wait, it will be. It is enough. Well, it was only enough background. because Nesty left. I think he actually would have gotten it, but he was a little bit indecisive there. Yeah. Wow. Oh, and here comes Bomber's Force. Is he going to walk over those Banelings? Oh, no. Oh, a huge force. <laughs> oh. Oh. And here oh, comes the Zerglings no. to clean up. Nesty moving in, and the GG coming from Bomber. The game ending Baneling landmine taking the series for Nesty. And wow, Bomber, you know, he took out the best turn in the world in the MVP in the Code 8 Finals. But here in the round of 32 of the Super Tournament, Nesty, the best Zerg in the world, taking him out and uh, advancing to the round of 16 in his stead. And that was. Very well played, and Nesty just showing he ha, how why he's so dominant, why he is the best Zerg, just with some immaculate play. Yeah, some really decisive decision moves. Making. I liked it. The Baneling landmines were really smart as well, and um, you know, I was like, is he gonna do it perfectly right? Because I was like, if he gets it at the perfect moment, he'll kill so many Marines, and he did. He did it just right. Yeah, I was like, that's how you do it. Oh, uh, uh, poor bomber. Poor bomber. Yeah, man, that was that was hardcore. He's like, all right. Got my army. I can move out for one final push, and he lost three quarters of it in one shot. Yeah, it's it's Didn't almost even saddening. get the chance to make that. I last can tell push. Bomber actually just walked by us. He got out of here pretty quick, and I can tell he was a little disappointed with his results today. Yeah, um, but that's how it goes. Nest he is a that's master. How it goes. He is a master. He's yep. a grandmaster, actually. So only one champion, <laughs> only one championship upset today in MVP. Getting taken out, man, by Slayers Ganji. Wow. Yeah. Um, so three Slayers players advance, and Nesty advances today. And Nesty advances. We're going to... Um, I think we're going to have a quick little interview here. In yeah, we're going to interview our winner, Nesty, in just a minute there. But uh, And that's going to be pretty cool. But, uh, man, I don't know what Bomber could have done. He just got... He just got like outplayed, like yeah. everything. It wasn't like a situation where like Bomber didn't take advantage of something, or like he made a mistake or anything like that. He played really well. There was just nothing he could do. We're gonna get to that interview now, though. Any second now? Probably. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, Most likely. but yeah, Bomber uh, again. It's a really good play, but yeah. just just nothing you can do against the superior play. Okay, Congratulations, Nesty. Oh, 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 Wow, he said, uh, I just beat the player who I thought was the most difficult. Uh, so he feels pretty good. Gugim says a Korean clothing company is not out, by the way. Oh yeah, I remember I saw it was going to be sponsored by a clothing company or something like that. Yeah. Okay. He says that um, uh, because he just beat one of the top players, he feels he has a good chance at the championship. I want to win the Protoss. If he wins, it will be difficult. He wants to play against Protoss in this tournament. Oh, that's right. He is going to be playing Slayer for Young next. Or no, I'm sorry. They're from a different group. I forgot what that bracket looks like. But um, he says he wants to play for us. 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 
앞으로의 선전을 기대하겠습니다. 네. He says, I'm going to show you guys some more great games and fun games uh, for Zer. And thank you very much for supporting me, he said. So there you go. So yeah, Gugums is a clothing company. I, I actually can't believe I forgot that. And also, I think IM was recently sponsored by Coca-Cola, I heard. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah. Which is kind of funny because Coca-Cola is the company that makes... Uh, Coca-Cola is the company that makes Nest Tea. So, it's kind of funny that Nest Tea is now sponsored indirectly by Nest Tea. That's true. Tastosis, man. They demanded it. They said, someone tell Nest Tea to sponsor this guy. And they did, sort of indirectly. Anyway... Here's the results for today. Started off with an upset. Ganji versus MVP. Ganji taking on MVP. Slayer's MMA barely breaking out with the win. 2-1 against Supernova. Ryung outplaying Violet. The Codes player, 2-1. And Nesty rolling Bomber. 2 to 0 with yeah, incredible macro play. Yeah, what we thought play. might be the closest games of today. We're actually the most one-sided, exactly. yeah. Very interesting. Um, so that was the matches for today. Of course, the first three were from Group A, and the last one was from Group D. All right, so we've got MVP Keen, OGS Juke 2, TSL Trickster versus The Best Foyu, MVP Genius versus Slayer's Men, Hong and Prime versus TSL Revival. I'll be here tomorrow casting those matches. Yeah, so Keen versus Juke 2, by the way, is the last match that Bomber uh, yeah. ST's match took place of. They're going to play that tomorrow. And then three matches from Group B as well. So that's what's going on there. Indeed. Yep. Well, Hongen, I, I wonder if he'll beat Revival. I think that he might have some trouble. Genius. Yeah, those are, those are going to be pretty good. Genius Ju versus Men, I think he might have some trouble as well. So. Those, those are all going to be pretty cool games as well. We got TVZ, PVT, PVZ, PVZ. No, no mirror matches tomorrow. And yeah, those are actually... Uh, uh, also look like they're going to be pretty close. Now, of course, I thought Bomber versus Nesty was going to be close. And Nesty just outclassed him. But uh, those should be should be pretty cool games. Yeah, they definitely pretty cool should. cool games. Um, well, guys, it's been fun. It's been one of the longest days of casting I've ever had at the GSL. Yeah, it is, uh, it is pretty late here. The only time it was later was uh, during the team league uh, when we had to do two best of sevens. That went pretty late. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Thanks again to LG Cinema 3D, Intel, G-Skill, all that. I am Moltrap. With me here is Wolf. We have been happy to cast these tournament games for you, and uh, thanks very much for watching. See you tomorrow.